Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now the SIM card has been our faithful helper for at least the last 30 years. I remember when I got my first feature phone with buttons, 2G GSM as uh, we call it, uh, and I had a SIM card kind of the size of a credit card and they kind of cut away at the plastic over the years and they got smaller and smaller, but we're still, I've got a SIM card in my, in my current phone. I mean, they've been always part of the mobile uh, experience. However, over the last few years, a new technology has been coming in called eSIM that is going to eventually replace uh, SIM cards in most markets, I don't think in all markets. And today I wanna to look at what is eSIM, how it compares to a SIM, some of the other technical details, uh, and so we can come away with an understanding of what the future holds. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, what is an eSIM and how does it work? These are replacing the traditional SIMs that we see there. We're not gonna need them anymore, as I said, in, uh, in most markets. So let's start with what a SIM is. A SIM card stands for Subscriber Identity Module. It's a small removable chip used in a mobile device to store and manage information related to the cellular network and to the user identity. So we're all very familiar with them. This is what they looked like back in the day when I got my first 2G phone. It was a huge credit card size that you slotted right in the back of the phone. And then over the years, they've cut away at this plastic until you've basically got hardly any plastic. But if you notice the chip size, has remained the same. This chip and how it functions is basically the same thing across all of the different sizes. Now, SIM cards play several essential roles in smartphones, in mobile phones. The SIM card contains a unique international mobile subscriber identity, the IMSI, that identifies the user to the mobile network. This allows the network to associate the user's device with a specific account to manage billing and services and connectivity. Now, it also works for authentication. The SIM card holds an authentication key that is used by the network to verify the user's identity. This key ensures that only authorized devices can access the mobile network and prevents unauthorized access or fraud. Uh, so obviously they try to make it hard for a phone that's not authorized to connect to the phone, to the network, consume minutes, consume data, and the same way to prevent you know, uh, cloning and all this kind of stuff. Of course, there are problems to do with that. Now, it also provides some storage. SIM cards can store data, such as contact information, text messages, network settings, that makes it easier to transfer user data when switching devices, because we know that you get a new device, and you take out the SIM card, and you put it in. Now, before the days of you know Google Photos, and before Google Contacts, or the equivalent on Android, you'd hope that all your contacts were on there, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Also has carrier information about the mobile operator. So the card comes from the network operator itself, whatever company you're using, okay, it's for their network. And they also enables a mobile phone to connect to the cellular network and make to make and receive calls because it provides the access information needed. Now an eSIM or an embedded SIM is a type of SIM card, so similar to what you've just been talking about in mobile devices, it's a small, but now it's a small integrated chip that's directly embedded, built into the device, rather than a removable card on a tray that you can pull in or out. But basically the functions it provides are exactly the same. So why would you want to use an eSIM rather than a normal SIM? Well, they are significantly smaller. Okay, you don't need this space for the tray anymore. You don't need to have a little pin thing that you push the tray open with. It's convenience, they can be activated or deactivated uh, over the network. You can, uh, we'll talk more about this in a minute. It's You don't need to pull out a card, put in a different card. It can be done uh, remotely, so you don't need to have the physical card with you because the SIM profile can be updated uh, over the network, over Wi-Fi. It can store multiple profiles. You can have multiple cards. You don't need dual SIM actually two physical slots. In fact, we'll look later, you can actually store on some, you know, up to eight sometimes uh, on uh, some devices. You don't need eight slots, you know, you can just need, you don't need any at all. And of course there is the improved uh, durability. I've had it myself, I've swapped out SIM cards and in the process, for whatever reason, I've damaged one, I've had to go and get a new SIM card and they've had to activate it. And it, I, I've lost service for a couple of days while I went in, oh, it's quite a nightmare. So pulling cards in and out can also uh, cause damage. 
Now the way it works is this, carriers typically pre present eSIM profiles as a QR code that you scan and download. So for example, on the S21, you go into settings, you tap connections, you go to SIM manager, and then here there's this add SIM. And if you click on that, the camera basically opens up and you've got a chance to scan in the QR code that you got from your carrier. The point is here is this makes it very easy. It's just you go in, scan a code and you're activated. Uh, you've got the new SIM card. And as I said, multiple. So if you have different uh, things, we'll talk more about dual SIM in a moment, but you just scan it and you're there. You don't need physical cards. Now I did just mention the IMSI and I thought it was worth just going into the IMEI, the International Mobile Equipment Identity, and the IMSI, the International Mobile Subscriber Identity, just to make sure you're not getting confused and also talk about their role with eSIM. So these are two numbers that uniquely identify things inside a mobile communication system. However, they serve different purposes. So the IMEI is a 15 digit number that identifies a specific device such as as a, a smartphone. It's used by mobile network operators to track and monitor devices as well as block stolen or lost devices from accessing the network. The IMEI is tied to the hardware and it remains the same even if you change your SIM or switch to a different mobile operator, if you unlock it, whatever you do, that is kind of the unique, very similar to the MAC address, the media access control address that you get on network cards. Uh, that make sure that is the uniquely identified. They're unique across the whole world. Every single network card uh, is unique. Every single Wi-Fi uh, chip is unique. And this is the same thing. Every mobile phone has this unique uh, number. Whereas the IMSI is not about your device, but it's about you. So it identifies a specific mobile network subscriber. So it's the subscriber identity fee. It's stored on the SIM card and used by the mobile network so that you get the bills, basically. You use the network and you have to pay for it. So it identifies use. Generally, it's not visible to the users as it's stored securely on the SIM card and used primarily for network related uh, purposes. In summary, the IME identifies the mobile device itself, while the IMSI identifies the subscriber associated with a particular network operator. The IMEI is essential for tracking and managing devices on a network, whereas the IMSI is crucial for managing user accounts and services. Do eSIM phones have an IMEI and an IMSI? Yes, eSIM phones have an international mobile equipment identity number, IMEI, just like phones with a traditional SIM card. And the IMEI remains the same even if you change your eSIMs, change your eSIM profile, switch to a different mobile network operator, it remains the same. And likewise, yes, eSIM phones have an international mobile subscriber identity number, because that's about you. And again, it is a 15 digit unique number that I specifies you as a subscriber. And in the case of an eSIM phone, the IMSI is stored inside the embedded SIM rather than physically on a SIM card. But the same information is stored in both cases. This one now is inside the embedded SIM rather than in the physical SIM that you can remove. So what are the eSIM compatible phones that we can buy today? This is not a comprehensive list, however it does cover most of the major ones. So from Samsung, you've got the uh, Galaxy S23 series, you've got the Galaxy S22 series, except for the S22 Plus, you've got the S21 series, the S20 series, the Note 20, the Galaxy Z Flip 4 and Fold 4, and the Galaxy Flip 3. So basically, if you've bought a Samsung flagship device within the last few years, it's probably likely that it is eSIM compatible. And basically the same with iPhone, but maybe more so. So you've got the iPhone 14, all the variants, 13, 12, 11, XS, XR, the iPhone SE 3 from 2022 and the SE 2 from 2020. When it comes to Google, basically anything after the Pixel 4 uh, is going to have eSIM compatibility. When it comes to the Nokia, you're looking at devices like the G65G, the X35G, and Oppo have got quite a few devices, the N2 Flip, the X3 Pro, the F X5, the X5 Pro, the Reno 5A, the A55S, the Reno 6G Pro, and so of course, before buying a device, you should check specifically with your, the way you're buying the phone, that the phone supports it, and with your operator to make sure that it does work. So here's the question, is dual SIM possible? Of course, the old, as I said, in the old days, you might have two little SIM card slots in the tray. You could put two SIM cards in there and that's useful because you might want to use one business number and one a personal number. You might have a better 
uh, data plan certainly locally so separate voice and data plans and that also applies when you go abroad you might want to buy a quick pay-as-you-go sim card pop it in so that you can don't get charged for all the roaming and you can still use the local services but then of course if you need to you still get contacted on your other number so we do that today i do that personally uh with my current phone i've got two sim cards in there uh, and uh, of course, can you do it with eSIM? Yes, you can. You can store multiple eSIMs, but only two active at the same time. That's generally uh, the rule. Some phones can only use one mobile data network at a time. So it depends exactly on the configuration and on how many can be active for data. Uh, you can use two different providers if your phone is unlocked. And you can use dual SIM by using a physical SIM and an eSIM or using two active SIMs. So it depends on what you can do. And as I said, some of them can store up to eight uh, profiles. So you can actually have eight uh, SIM cards in there. Uh, and as long as they're active and whatever is going on, you're doing the prepay or the paying as you go. Uh, and then you can switch, be switch between them as you need to. So that's a pretty useful feature that is. Can an eSIM store SMS messages or contacts? eSIMs like traditional SIM cards have some storage capacity that potentially could be used for storing SMS or contacts. However, in practice, SMS messages and contacts are now stored on the phone's internal storage, not on the SIM card itself. And in the past, the idea was, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, that if you move phones, you would take out the SIM card and you would bring it to the the other one and it'd have your phone numbers on it and it would have the sms message we're not really in that age anymore so that doesn't really apply there's not really that advantage of storing that information in an eSIM. okay that's it so the eSIM. so i'd love to hear from you are you using a phone with an eSIM? is it activated does it work or are you still using a uh, traditional sim card i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up don't forget you can follow me on social media all the things are here on the screen i also have a monthly newsletter go over to garyexplains.com Type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. And last but not least, if you enjoy these kind of videos, I invite you to stick around, become part of the community by hitting that subscribe button. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.